Hello and welcome to what well, third edition of Coach a Dev. I'll be your host today. My name is Ola Rafsteinarsson, also known as Ole Krummi, and I have a really special guest today. You can see him um, over there. I think he's on my left or no, on the right on your screen. Um, and that's Darkness. Um, welcome, Darkness. Welcome. So. We've done uh, two iterations of this before. We did one with Spoos where we went over um, starting decks. So what you can do kind of just after downloading the game and how to start your journey in cards. Then we did one about draft with Blue Blast where we talked about how to get those seven wins and really turn the draft into a way to further your collection and, and start earning those cards and rewards. And now we're going to talk about the top of the ladder um, and really about the high level cards gameplay where all these superheroes with their full collections are slugging it out um, and us mere mortals can only stand to the side and uh, watch. So thank you so much for giving us uh, some time and uh, a chance to get into your brain a little bit, Darkness. Why don't you start by just telling everybody a little bit about yourself and you know your card's career so far. Well, thank you, Oli, for this nice introduction. Yeah, my in-game name is Darkness, and I'm playing since since June 2019, the 7th of June, so a little bit more like a year I'm playing cards now. So I started Season 3, and I started with barely no cards, and I didn't invest any money into cards, so I'm completely free to play playing uh, player. Oh wow! And oh, you didn't know that? No, I thought you. I thought you'd bought at least a few packs, but yeah, that's really not cool. even not even the welcome offer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I was student at the time I started playing cards, so I didn't had have, uh, have much t money to invest into games. Mm -hmm. I was looking for a free to play game, and I played a lot of Hearthstone before the business model was forced into spending a lot of money, you know? Yeah. And I was quite successful at free-to-play Hearthstone 2, playing a lot of Arena. So I was very grateful the draft mode came up. There I could play with uh, some skill as Hearthstone veteran mm -hmm. and build up my collection just by playing just by playing a lot of draft, uh, you need you need about an average of five, maybe five and a half wins per draft run to gain back on average 15 gold per run. And if you are that good, you're able to play over and over again and just grinding your resources and cards out of nowhere. That's an amazing feature. Yeah, and, yeah. I've, I've, yeah. I've, I've learned, like, after my coaching session with Blue, like, um, it, like, I was not lying when I said I'd never gotten more than three wins in draft before that, like, three-hour session with Blue, and now I'm mm. averaging five, six wins every draft um, just with some kind of a little, little uh, pointers, and I'm really starting to push my collection um, using that, so. Yeah, this is great indeed. Um, but of course, you you need some training, some experience to achieve that. Yeah, <laughs> and maybe some coaching sessions. Uh, so yeah, about my cards career, I hit rank two at the ladder at three seasons and rank one at the ladder at the ladder three seasons as well. Uh, so I'm one of the better cards player yeah and if 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 you're reaching uh, that high on the ladder rank one the rank one player after season is receiving a physical reward yeah. this is pretty nice some little trophy some little cards merch um i only received one so far i don't know if the other packs are missing or not send it yet. Probably on the uh, way. Probably on the way. I could ask Tomisk about that. 
Yes. And since last season, there's a top eight tournament sponsored by Cards and uh, organized by by 1939. So the top eight player are going to have a tournament against each other uh, with the earnings of a total one thousand mm-hmm. dollar prize. This is this is great because um, it's way more competitive and hype now to get into top eight since the last seasons. Some seasons were were very boring at the end. So two guys are fighting for top one, may, maybe three guys fighting for top ten, and that's it. Yeah. Uh, but n- now it's way more competitive, and maybe uh, this will be a future esports scene. Well, I mean, I can definitely tell you that uh, I plan to make it a future esports scene. So uh, for anybody that's that's wondering if uh, if there's a lot of tournaments coming and a lot of opportunities to get into some high level play around cards and whether or not it's worth it to to really become an expert at the game, like. Yes, uh, it is, um, and we'll we'll continue with those uh, monthly tournaments um, for the top eight. Um, I would love to expand that once we get better capabilities to run the tournament to top sixteen or top thirty-two or something like that. Um, and then we have so many ideas on how to um, build up card esports in the coming years, um, and I can't really wait to to see how that kind of plays out with you guys. And I'm really like. <sighs> I say this every stream. I'm super thankful for you know our top players, uh, our top community contributors uh, like yourself that are streaming, that have poured hundreds or thousands of hours into the game and and really learned every nook and cranny about it. Um, you know that's the thing that uh, makes this game um, able to succeed. So you know just thanks um, for for all your hard work so far. But now I'm going to give you the hardest task uh, so far, which is. Uh, to teach me a little bit about some high, high level cards and um, and how you build some decks. So I wanted to start it off by just going out and looking at one of your high level decks and just get your explanation around the different cards in it, you know, when you were building it, what you were thinking. Um, and then we'll go into talking a little bit about, you know, what's the difference between a high level deck and a mid level deck, um, a person that doesn't have extensive card game experience, doesn't have extensive experience with cards, what are the mistakes that they're making in building their deck? And we'll then build our own high-level deck, test it out against each other a couple times. Don't worry, everyone. We're not going to descend on the ladder with a a fresh account with a (laughs) full collection and a deck built by Darkness. And then in the end, I was thinking about challenging Blue Blast to a couple of matches to see if we can't uh, beat him out um, with our joint little deck here. Um, so yeah, we built this deck earlier, which is your token deck. Why don't you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, my my token deck is um, pretty simple, catching the idea of the token archetype. You know, there are different archetypes in this game. Mm-hmm. The easiest way to explain is the archetype is the general type of the deck you are playing. And overall, there are uh, three big, maybe four big archetypes. The first one is aggressive. Second one for cards is control. And the third one is ramp. And the last one is a combo and other. So this archetype belongs to the aggressive deck type you are able to play okay. and this should be your pl- plan your match plan if you're going to play this and if you're going to build this uh, this you need to have this deck plan what are you going to do uh, token token match uh, the token deck means Specifically, you're going with Soviet main nation and US ally because US have the greatest buff cards um, in general. 
and if you run a lot of infantry infantry units, mm, that's the uh, yeah that's the basic of the stack. So you run a lot of these cheap infantry units, 554th rifle regiment, uh, maybe 16 rifles, 300. 31 rifles for sure, reserves for sure. Mm -hmm. uh, you, If you're running Soviet, you already run a few bloody sickles. Yeah. Mm. Man of Steel was buffed recently, and this card is, well, it's fun to play, but it's also great, great uh, for this deck because tokens recently struggled a lot against ag aggro but with one heavy arm more onto three four five till till nine or ten units this deck is way more efficient in trading against other low credit units mm -hmm. so i do like this card in tokens uh, the combat engineers are great in general with this deck uh, and unity is strength is a key card, same with industri industrial might, um, because you are going to run a lot of infantry units, and these this two K buff uh, has a ability to make one 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 little soldier with zero operation cost to a eight eight. So, soldier, if you're having seven cards on the board, sometimes you don't need that much. Sometimes you're able to buff him even more. Mm -hmm. uh, Industrial Might is a key card because you're lagging card war with this deck. Okay. And uh, this is a great combo card with no surrender and reserves because you're easily able to play four units drawing four cards with Industrial Might. Mm -hmm. uh, you can... Uh, 99's Infantry Battalion is very good because you can send back, for example, the Grenadier Guards or some just big guards, making the enemy wasting uh, a lot of credits and pressuring him even more. Indeed. Can add... Sorry, yeah. in, in general, are you are you holding this card back um, until you can use it to push back a big unit, or do you play it early under under some circumstances? Um, well, I play this card under under circumstances. Okay. If I'm going to face Britain, for example, I raid for Grenadier Guards or other big units I need to remove. Um, if I'm running against, well, this is match. This depends on the matchup. Sometimes I'm rating for this card uh, because I know there's a Takasaki regiment incoming or Grenadier guards. Uh, but sometimes you have to play it quite early on just to send back a Gebirgsjäger to uh, to achieve board dominance and be able to trade in your favor. Okay. Okay. Uh, the 35th Rifle Regiment, you don't really need this card. I'm testing this currently. The Hammer is a great removal. Uh, the Tomahawk is able to buff your cheap infantry units. And the Cuban Cossacks is a great elite card as well. So we are going to use this. No Surrender a, is great with is great as combo with unity as strength and industrial might and so the alliance for sure because you're able to buff quite a lot of units and get big value out of it mm -hmm. um, you're running to the alliance because this is one of the greatest buff cards in cards and you're going to play a lot of units so this card can have big impact most of the game and I added one mobilization because as I mentioned the stack is lagging card war mm -hmm. and the naval bigard 
because this is a um, strong removal. So you can see out of my explanation, uh, this deck is very based on getting this combo up, buffing your units, getting value out of these units, get rid of uh, turn five, six, seven answers to that, like Grenadier Guards or other units, and just smash your opponent. Yeah. So, so this deck is uh, straightforward, so like now... most of the aggro game, uh, like most of the aggro archetypes, mm -hmm. and this makes it match plan more easy to follow. Okay. Um, so when you are facing other token decks, when you are in a mirror matchup in terms of tokens, what is it about you know your version of tokens that tends to be different from others that make it so that you win those mirror matchups? Um, this good question. Well, there are quite a lot of mirror matchups uh, with the same idea and this deck is able to win because I'm I have a lot of cards who are able to uh, get the board presence very early on mm -hmm. but um, there are because there are other token decks with for example we can do it or the Amora Train, or even Joseph Stalin, and these... Wait, let, let me check this. What's the name? Ah, 1,271 rifles, 5k, mm. climbing at reserves to your hand. These token decks are slower, and this is why my deck is able to win early on. A, Maybe these tokens the decks are not running Man of Steel. Mm -hmm. So if I'm going to trade 1-1 one, one units into 1-1 one, one units and my units have one heavy armor, I'm going to win this trade. But uh, if I'm not achieving board dominance early on against these slower token decks, I will lose in a late game. Okay. It mm. makes sense. It makes sense. Um, so when you're mulliganing in this, what are you looking for um, as your first cards? Like, what is your, let's say, and are you looking for different things based on whether or not you go first or second? Um, this, uh, yes, I'm looking for different things. And um, this depends on the matchup. Okay. Sometimes I'm keeping cards like the 99th infantry battalion if i'm expecting uh quite early on great great stats great units for example playing against germany uh the volksgrenadier 3k 36 unit this guy is able to smack down a lot of my tokens so i'm going to keep this unit uh if I if I know the opponent is running Volksgrenadier, mm -hmm. and if I'm running in Germany in general, not knowing what he's playing, I will keep this card if I'm second. Okay. Because uh, the cards I'm looking for are the 554th Rifle Regiment, Zukov First Rifles, uh, 321 Rifles, maybe one Bloody Sickle. Uh, if I start first, definitely one bloody sickle if I start second. And one reserves. But I really, really want to have the combat engineers in combination with the 554th rifle regiment. Yeah. If, I, if I'm that lucky to play, for example, I'm starting having combat engineers two rifle regiment and one reserves or one 321 rifle regiment this would be the perfect mulligan uh, mm -hmm. because turn one 
you're able to play common engineers, moving two units to the front line with zero operation cost, buffing them to two two units. And for turn two, you I'm able to play reserves, adding one unit, or even better, playing the rifle, the 321 rifle regiment to the front line too. If he's not able to kill my combat engineers, having three buffed unit in the front line, already starting dealing a lot of damage. Nice, yeah. <clears throat> I mean, that sounds like something that's pretty difficult to deal with for for most uh, opponents if they find themselves having you know two 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 units in their front line <laughs> um, after turn one. <laughs> yeah. So. Uh that's that's very characteristic for uh, acro archetypes mm -hmm. uh, you are able to get like the perfect starting hand dealing so much uh, value and pressure to your opponent uh, with this you're able to win any matchup if yeah. the opponent doesn't draw the perfect answer maybe he doesn't have any perfect answer in his deck if you are having the greatest start hand. All right, so I kind of want to try this deck out, but against you, so that I don't just accidentally crush a new player's hopes um, by having him face okay. this deck. So uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna swap to the other scene so that people you won't get spam at it. But I think I sent you a friend request earlier. Ah, uh, um, let me check that. And so, yeah. um, and and while I while I wait for us to get into into this first game, so I'm I'm gonna play the I'm gonna play a deck, and you're not gonna cheat and look at my screen, um, and then afterwards you can tell me if you felt like I did some mistakes. Okay. And you can um, bring a, you can bring a deck that's like that's counter, like acts a counter or not a counter. Maybe we do one against the counter deck and one a non counter, so you. We can show people how how it really performs well against one deck, but not against another. Okay, so you want the non-counter first? Yeah, let's do that. Just so that you know, my my ego doesn't take too big of a hit when you when you crush me. Okay. <laughs> um. Um. Yeah, for everybody wondering, the reason why I have these resources is because I don't have an account um, with all the stuff unlocked and. Um, Darkness plays with a full collection, so this is just a fresh account that I don't really use that we're just using uh, for this stream So that I can have all the cards I need to keep up um, So did you did you accept? Um, I'm, I'm looking for a non-counter deck because most of my current deck lists are able to beat aggro <laughs> Let's okay. I'm I'm quickly gonna relog just to make sure. There's also one thing that for the people watching that you might be interested in knowing. Um, during this stream, we're gonna spoil six cards because I'm gonna be spoiling six. Yeah, I'm spoiling five, and then you're gonna be spoiling one uh, one elite one. Um, that's one of my favorite elites coming um, and uh, yeah and then we're gonna have um, yeah we're, I'm, I, we have some announcements we have some announcements this stream uh, I'm, I'm spoiling five cards at once and I'll do it if I win this game I'll do it after this game okay I'll spoil the five cards after this game but I'm not allowed to let you win <laughs> I guess you gotta, you gotta uh, make sure that people don't get to know the cards. All right. Okay, I have no idea what I'm playing, but surely I'm going second, so I guess I can keep this. That's not a good starting hand. It's fine. I, I, uh, because of the boils of cards. I wish I could tell that. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm... 
Oh Sadly, I am. God. Any tips against playing against resistance? Mm, normally, aggro beats resistance. I got like the perfect starting hand to deal with you. <laughs> I got the bad starting hand to deal with me. Mm, the key, uh, the key of winning against resistance is to achieve board dominance. So, much cards as possible into the board and uh, achieving achieving board presence because most of the time uh, resistance is this to direct pressure oh i have a feeling i'm gonna lose this okay 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 some credit denial there okay It's all about board control, right? Yeah, board control. Mm. We got him drawing. We got him on the ropes. Oh no, he draws something. He drew something good. Oh, I knew it. I knew it. to do something like this. <laughs> think, Ollie, think. I'm trying. Mm. I'm trying, Corsetter. I'm trying. Well, this was definitely bad because it's turn six for me and I'm not able to play carpet bombing right now. So it would probably mm. be terrible if if I buffed all these cards to 3-3 three, three next turn, and then you just carpet bomb them all. Yeah, I, I would wait for that. <laughs> but... I'm so sorry. Mm, Black Watch is normally great. But now you're not able to play these uh, no. on curve or as soon as possible. Mm. He's got the fury as well. Hmm. I have no hammer. I don't want to bounce. I overdrew myself there. Come on. Mm, but it's only one reserve. I'm I'm thinking about my deck lists. Do I have a deck list who's bad against aggro? Like not able to deal with this?
I have something that buffs something. I'm trying to like I'm trying to I'm trying to do the thing that all the best players do and play around carpet bombing, but then it doesn't work for me. Mm. At some point, at some point, surely I just have to bite the bullet and just. In your situation, you're not able to play around carpet bombing because it's already too late for you yeah. to play around. Controlling the board, attacking with already three HP units, four HP unit. <laughs> so this, uh, to make as much units survive as possible. But running an acro archetype uh, that late in this game. You're just not able. There's also like some nice credit denial there. Just on six credits, not able to yeah. do anything. I got the perfect starting hand with two other one of these corps to deal with early units. Discard the 109th. Nice. Unlucky. I've been, I've been like, I've been called lucky in the past two streams, Coach Dev streams. So it's my time to be unlucky. Well, last week was my time to be unlucky. Oof. So how does this? Uh, so how does your like preparation? change um how does your preparation change when it comes to preparing for tournaments mm. well you definitely need to play a lot if you're going to play in a tournament decks Uh, and collect some informations about the player you're facing. So, an idea in general, what you're facing at. But the most important part of playing a tournament is your mental attitude. Uh, sure, you're going to be very nervous, but... Um, you need to get yourself into a positive mental attitude to uh, be able to focus on your game and not make yeah i just i uh, just changed the title of the of the broadcast to wreck a dev featuring darkness <laughs> oh right. yeah rematch Doing this again. Doing this again. Mm. Well, let me play and and what is usually again types. Hello everyone, hello Cold Carl, hello 62099, hello everyone else that's in chat. Thanks so much for joining us. Uh, thank you for, uh, thank you to Darkness for, for giving us a chance to uh, scratch his brain a little bit as well. All right, now it's looking a little bit better, it's looking a little bit better. Never mind. <clears throat> I'm really bad at mulliganing apparently. I got one of these now, so. 
I don't know your cards, but I... Wait, you, you got cut off a little bit. Oh, I... Do you hear me again? Yes. Uh, I do believe this is a mistake you made. Playing okay. the... This rifle regiment, turn one. To do this, maybe turn... If you are starting the game, but you started second. Two for me, I have a lot of options to trade this little guy. Mm -hmm. uh, you should. True. One? You, are... you should keep this card. Uh, if you're running. It's unlikely. You can start dealing damage. Mm, but if you're only running. If you're only running one. Yeah, you should wait for a combo with combat engineers, with Tomahawk, with Unity, with Drinks, with the Alliance. Yeah, that makes sense. That was very unlucky for you. Oh, you're able to play this guy. I got a backup plan. <laughs> nice. This is interesting. Two. What is this guy thinking? This guy below me. What is he doing? Oh, oh. Hey, I listen to you. I kept this. Oh my god. <clears throat> Is this some baby combo deck you're running there? You're messing with me? Yeah. <laughs> Because oh. so I, I I did the I I I have to give myself a little bit of credit there because I only did the retreat thing because I knew your hand was full. I was like I can get rid of him. Yeah, sure. Th this was a great play, but are you not having any unity strengths to yeah buff one unit to deal more damage? I do, I do. But like, so I feel like. That's probably a mistake I'm making in terms of uh, wanting to save that until I have more units on the board. Uh, and this... ...it. Uh, even two... Even running two uh, units and buffing them, if you're able to attack, this is worth uh, playing unity strengths. I told you I'm very lucky today. You're gonna run out of time. You're gonna run out of time. <laughs> animations take longer. Take longer. Take longer animations. This is not going down. She's stuck at nine seconds. No. <laughs> well, th this sometimes this the timer is and the animations are still running. Yeah. Well, talking about the baby combo deck, um, that's gonna be like this deck, like or or a version of the baby combo deck is gonna be our featured deck of the week. So I'm gonna be um, 
I'm going to be publishing an article on this on Friday featuring Scout's version of this deck and uh, his compilation video that uses the new um, expansion Elite in it to uh, to pull a double auto cannon, which is great. But I, I just want to see, like, are you... I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to change so that you can see my screen. Uh, let me go here. Yes. Okay. So I'm gonna I'm is everyone ready to see five new cards that are coming in the expansion? And not just five new cards that are coming in the expansion, but five new cards that are gonna be added into draft mode starting today. So if you wanna use these cards uh, yourself up until the launch of the expansion, these cards are gonna be uh, implemented into draft. Um, yeah. Wow, I, I see some, there's some hype in chat. And I'm just, uh, are you ready, Darkness? Are you ready? Uh, I'm, they are too small. I'm not able to see them right now. I will, I will make them bigger for you. Um, wait, I'll make them bigger for you. Uh, are you ready? You'll see it, you'll see them in a sec. Oh, oh, there we go. And there they are, the five Great. cards that are going to be added into the draft mode um, starting today. Um, so from mo from tomorrow, you're going to be able to play these cards. Um, you're going to be able to play these cards into, uh, into the draft. So the first one here is a British card. It is called East Surrey Regiment. What's up? Is Gumme is easier? Uh, wait, wait, wait. I need to make it so that they can see you. Everyone. <laughs> he is very slammed right now, um, getting everything ready for the expansion. And uh, while well, I just get to sit here and play with darkness and show you guys some cards. So I count myself pretty lucky here. When are these cards going into draft? Uh, I don't know. Is it today? Uh, yeah, today or tomorrow. Today or tomorrow, yeah, yeah. It's going to be... Uh, Thomas knows. Thomas knows. He's in chat somewhere. The community Thomas knows. But yes, let's go through it. Um, let's go through these cards one by one. So we have the East Surrey Regiment. Uh, this is a 2-6 guard unit uh, common for Britain. This is very similar to the Churchill, but it's not a tank and it doesn't have um, one heavy armor and it's coming in at two credits less uh what is your first thoughts on this card darkness um i do believe this card can be very because this mm, these are great stats a little less than volksgrenadier compared with volksgrenadier is maybe the uh, yeah the best card to possible but having six turn three sounds pretty good compared to fifth fifth regiment uh this card is maybe even better in value and trading because for 2k this is uh, the fifth brigade is one five guard and you uh one attack Mm -hmm. But uh, it's like this is uh, is fitting perfectly to the British theme, and with some buffs like cup of tea or other, this car very strong uh, against aggro decks. So aggro decks don't like this card. Aggro player don't like this upcoming card for sure. Oh, definitely not. And then the second thing we have here is the 1,005th Rifles. Uh, it's a 5-3 ambush uh, infantry unit with four deployment costs, one operation cost. And uh, it has the familiar effect when it's targeted with an order, draw a card. So this works pretty well, I guess, in terms of uh, you know keeping tempo and replacing itself if the 1,005th need to be removed. The... Uh, 
um, a spell, which they probably will be a lot of the time, seeing as though that they have ambush. Yeah, giving them giving them the ability to draw cards when targeted with an order and ambush uh, makes this card maybe good. Three cards, uh, three HP is not that strong. These guys are easily removed with bombers, uh, maybe with mosquito and carpet bombing. Uh, these AOE removals are quite able to deal with this card. Mm, maybe f four credits with three HP is not good enough. Uh, if I'm comparing this with uh, these five three ambush guy from the Japanese, uh, with the ability your opponent's headquarters not able to gain HQ uh, or HP. HP. Yeah. Um, this card is quite, quite bad most of the time too, in high high ladder ranking. Mm -hmm. So, All right. I don't know if this guy is going to be played a lot, or or not. I feel like I feel like he's. I feel like this is a card that's good for a turn if you get it out on curve, like. Yeah, for sure. If, if you're able to play this on turn 4, moving it to the front line turn 5, uh, it's hard to deal with, definitely. Yeah. But maybe this could fit in some tokens, token decks. Mm, I don't know. But most Soviet decks are slower. Uh, but, but they are lagging uh, some good turn 2. Uh, a three and four drops, so maybe this guy is played. Let's see. That's actually it's actually a really good point by Bubbles there in chat talking about like the thousand and fifth with Sukov is going to be really interesting um, if you get that out uh, turn two. But let's jump on over to the U.S. card here, the hundred sixty fourth Infantry Regiment. Uh, that is a one one body infantry with a one uh, deployment cost, zero operation cost, and a destruction effect that gives a friendly unit non like a random friendly unit one one when it is destroyed. So, a fairly good kind of early game card to to get into the front line early. Yeah, this this card fits perfect to the U.S. Japanese aggro archetype. So. You are able to spam a lot of units, buffing them, and uh, starting early pressure. And same with the destruction effect. Um, you're running uh, a lot of units, in, uh, or quite some units, in Japan and US, who wants to get destroyed, like the Corsair uh, for US. And uh, units dealing damage to headquarter or dealing random damage with the Japanese. Mm -hmm. So these cards will fit pretty good into these aggressive Japanese US decks. <laughs> then we go over to the German card, um, and this is this is probably my favorite card of this. And when you know when i learned that these were going into the draft early um i just said i'm playing mono germany in draft for the next week until the expansion comes out um, <laughs> and that's the three six uh, three six one africa regiment um when this unit moves into the front line deal three damage to the enemy hq and it's a three cost one operation cost and three three body i feel like this is a really strong card it really is um they have quite a lot of Acro German archetypes, and this unit mm, got some decent stats. Well, it's a three-three body. That's that's fine. Uh, this would be amazing for two credits, but it's three credits, so it's still fine because of this effect. Dealing three damage is a lot. Mm -hmm. mm. And it's not on destruction or anything, Even, it's just on uh, Yeah, it it's up. just when you're able to move this to the front line. But this fits to the German theme, like you want to be in the front line, you want to control the front line. Uh, good job there. And uh, compared to Air, air Blitz, Airstrike, mm -hmm. 
-hmm. these 4K order card are recently played a lot in the last two, maybe not last week, but uh, over the past three weeks. Uh, this was played quite often because of the damage potential these 4K order card has mm -hmm. dealing four damage. So th this is a 3K unit dealing uh, 3K as dealing three damage when moving to the front line. This should be very powerful. And it's a it's a common card as well. So you can have four copies of this, and if you move them all into the front line during the game, you've done 12 damage just by moving <laughs> them into the front line. Yeah, that's that sounds ridiculous. To be honest, I do believe this card is getting nerfed, <laughs> and maybe one month. So make maybe sure earlier. to make sure to play a lot of it in draft. Until yeah, <laughs> until try we... try uh, this card. Um. Well. Damn. See the the viewers on on the stream can't see it, but I'm watching your webcam and I can just see the gears turning in your head. To like, how does <laughs> Africa Regiment fit into these decks? But let's look at the last card here, and that is the first Taipei Regiment. It's a five credit to drop zero operating costs, three three infantry, that has Blitz and Fury, um, and uh, on a destruction deals two damage to the enemy HQ. So that's basically. You know, it has the destruction effect of Mido and the Blitz and Fury of the Bicycle Boys while having a 3-3 stat line. Well, this is <laughs> this is basically a new common version of Yokosuka. Um, <laughs> mm, Yokosuka got, got nerfed because it was too powerful and... Well, this is at 5k cost, so it's pretty slow to play this card, and it's not able to buff it uh, above 3 damage. But this card will be very strong with... Uh, what's, what's the name for this order card? 2k? Your infantry units are immune this turn and able to move and attack. Lightning hmm. infantry. Let me see. Lightning. Yeah, Lightning Conquest. Lightning Conquest. L lightning Conquest. Yeah, that's actually a good point. Um, this, this is a great combo with Lightning Conquest because you do have Blitz, Fury, zero operation costs for... Uh, uh, but you need seven credits. That's very slow for aggro decks to make this combo work, mm -hmm. but you are able to deal 6 damage uh, without losing anything uh, to the enemy headquarter or to heavy guards. And if you're already having a few units like the type, uh, the type 93, mm -hmm. this is 1k tank, friendly units have plus 1 attack, this is Guy is already dealing 8 damage, or you could wait till turn 8, collecting one type, uh, this guy and the Lightning Conquest. Mm -hmm. So, mm, this is quite slow, because it's 5, uh, uh, it's five credit costs, mm -hmm. but I do think this card will be played a lot, uh, because of the 2 destruction damage. Yeah. And... At this stage of match, uh, aggressive Japanese Japanese decks, all they do is, all they want to do is deal the missing, uh, dam the missing needed damage to the enemy headquarter. Mm -hmm. So th I do believe this card is quite strong and seen at least sometimes, maybe quite often. Well, if there's going to be an aggressive meta or Japanese meta. Yeah. So I'm wondering, um, should we do one more game and then you can reveal your card? Yeah, sure. Okay. So we're going to do one more game and then um, you're live, right? Yes, I'm live. Okay. So we're going to do one more game and then after we finish that game, 
Uh, Darkness is going to reveal uh, another card from the expansion on his stream. So he's currently streaming his POV as well. Um, I'm going to post the link to his stream in chat. Make sure to head on over there. Give him a follow. Um, he streams very regularly and is a constant uh, source of this type of knowledge. So if you have any questions about deck building or anything else, make sure to go and check out Darkness's stream um, and ask him questions in chat. I'm going to give uh, give myself one more chance to try and beat him with this uh, token deck be before we reveal the next uh, card that Darkness is uh, revealing and... Um, Maybe throw together a deck and challenge Blue Blast before we wrap up the stream at around 6. So we have around an hour left. Um, Alright. Mm, I'm going to choose the same deck now. So we are performing a mirror matchup. Okay, okay. So we're going into a mirror matchup. Um, I'm only playing against one of the best players in the game. So I'm surely going to win. Lucky bloody sickle there. Thank God. Yeah, this bloody sickle was very good. And a third bloody sickle. Yeah, I got all my bloody sickles, but now I have none left, so. And there they are, the Cossacks. You just go face with the Cossacks there, right? No, or do you want to trade? When you're playing against tokens, don't you always want to keep the number of units down on the field? Yeah, that's right. The most important thing, uh, thing um, in playing against tokens is to kill these tokens. Because with buff cards like the Alliance, Unity Strength, Combat Engineers, we can do it. Uh, you're able to buff these guys and get great value out of this so you need to trade these as uh yeah as good as possible and that was a mistake was made. it yeah because you should have traded with a buffed light infantry. Okay. Um, you want to have as much units as possible. You could you could have two more units in the front line. Yeah. And got some value out of unity strength, but you know I'm running the hammer, so this guy is dead. Mm, I get you. I get you. Of course, you're running hammer. That's why he's the best. See, like, and, and that's the whole point of this uh, these streams, is so you guys can learn from me fucking up.
messing up. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Crusader. It's my bad. Oh. Could learn. <laughs> Hammer. 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 I guess my main <laughs> good news is that I'm able to keep the front line here. Well, I'm in a similar situation. No, I don't know if you're running hammer or not. As you're making me blush, who is saying that I'm, I'm cute and handsome and stuff? Just like. Oh, yes, you are, definitely. <laughs> I yeah. asked my girlfriend. Oh, you did? No, that's, that's what just a compliment. But I will ask her. Oh, Lord. Finally, I did something correct. Wait, did you get a 554th from Sukov? Yes. <laughs> mm. Ouch. That's that's my that's my known luck. I feel like <laughs> that's and that's the reason I don't like Sukov in this matchup because I'm drawing so much 554th rifle regiment out of this card, this took off. It's not not very funny. So is it at at what point should I start going face? Um Surely I just go face now, right? Depends on your cards. Well you do have no surrender. There's you are clearly ahead at this position. There's no need for you to go full face. I would trade. Really? Um, you. It doesn't matter so because you won. Yeah. So what I you was thinking, like, and that's probably, you know, uh, it's probably wrong for me to think that. It's just, uh, I felt like you know, you don't have a lot of options to get through the front line, and I have so many units in the support line, so I can keep you locked with your current deck. Well, I, I could have played Naval Bigard or Mobilization into something good. Um, you're... Most of the time it doesn't matter anymore, you can start dealing damage, but based on units. And if I'm able to come back, then just because I do have some infantry guys there, you didn't trade it. Mm. Yeah, I feel like that's a mistake that I... Like, oh, I, sh I should have traded the 3-3 three, three instead of the 3-2. Uh, I wanted to tell you, you should have traded the 3-2 three, into my one. Yeah. Mm. Did I win? Did I win? Yeah, GG. GG. That was some good luck, for sure. But third time's the charm. Managed to uh, win in the in the mirror matchup, but it's like probably the the only one that I could have won. Um, it was a, it was a fun game. See, okay, wait, wait, one sec, one sec. Wait, what, what are you showing?
What season is this? Uh, this is season five. Is Win winner season, of season five. five. See, I I know it's reversed. I'm really sorry. I can't I can't unmirror it um, with you know <laughs> magic. But so I it have I have your season five plaque here, and I'm 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 breaking it because I just beat you. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, t just take a look. I I oh. do have my own one. Nice. Season five. Twins. See, Yay. I'm so happy. I'm, I managed to, to beat the guy that beat the, the season once. All right. So I think it's time for you to go reveal uh, a card on your stream. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to paste your stream link all over. Right now, everybody, head over to Darkness's stream. And watch his POV as he reveals the next card. Okay, everyone. Uh, let, let's wait maybe a few seconds. So they are able to load the game. Uh, to, to load the channel. Yeah. And let me open. Everybody, come on over. I mean, I I have my. I, I'm gonna I'm gonna. I'm gonna stream your stream. As well, so make make sure everybody can see. So. Ah, oh, thank you. Oh. Uh, who? Das Fantastico. Just follow it. So this is the new card, the new elite card of Britain. Rule. Give your British units plus two defense, then their attack becomes equal to their defense. Eight credits. Order card. <laughs> Chat. Fog jam. I hate it already. Oh my god. That's... Uh, my thoughts when I saw this card. I do believe this card has a lot of potential. Um, I don't know if this card will be overpowered, but in certain, uh, in in some, it definitely is going to be broken. Um. The British theme is like throwing a lot of guards with high HP and low attack uh, onto the battlefield and slowing the opponent. So this this card is maybe the pinnacle of these British control versions. Maybe you're going to see uh, more Churchills or the the new British card. Uh, 3k 26 is definitely being played with this card yeah imagine the combos you're able to make a f out of a fifth regard a 7-7 seven, seven guard out of the new card an 8-8 eight, eight card out of the all churchill and 8-8 eight, eight tank yeah, with heavy armor eight, eight tank with heavy armor uh, maybe grenadier guards is not that impressed 11-11 eleven, eleven guard infantry guy is Amazing. <laughs> well, all, you're sometimes you're already able to play not pure card, but with these cold stream guards in some decks. But no, this is going to be impressive. Like imagine HMS, uh, this three K order giving you uh, two swordfish bombers, one three, one, three. with. Yeah, with 12, with 12 credits and these two elite cards, you are able to have two 5-5 five, five Blitz Bombers. It's, 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 a, it's, good. it's a three credit, it's a three credit order. So you're able yeah. to have two 5-5 five, five Blitz Bombers and attack with one of them in the same turn. Yes. <laughs> wow, that's crazy. Yeah, it's a cup of tea if, plus if naval you're, If you're running the credit costs 
um, or Pioneer Company, you could be able to turn 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 ten or turn eleven uh, uh, cards played and attacking with these five five bomber. Um, I do believe this card is quite strong. Let's see if this card will going to be uh, played at the highest level rank right after we release for sure to test this but I'm quite interested in the new British meta decks I do believe the British needed a buff it's a long time ago since Britain were strong uh, it's now seven months ago Yeah. British were, were good at the high level ranked place so it's time for Britannia now. Yeah. Um, I Like, Britain was my first love in the game. Like, it was the first uh, nation that I played. So I'm really happy to see it. Um, and Andrea Rossini, um, we talked a little bit about the naval cards in the last AMA that we did last month. Um, and we talked about, like, it feels pretty weird to have the naval cards as units. That you could have, like, a submarine in the front line fighting an infantry. That would be really weird. So they're <laughs> currently, you know, take the form of orders, mostly. Um, but that yeah, could change. I, that could change? Really? I mean, um, it's this, very unlikely. This... It's very unlikely going to change, but it could change. Um, um Yeah, I, I thought about... And yes, it's feel, it, feel real, it feels real uh, sending infantry guys or guys on horses against a battleship. Yeah. Like imagining attacking, seeing the Cuban Cossacks or these Italian guys pretending they are tanks, actually killing a warship. <laughs> um, so, there's one thing. So, I, I do like the idea of having ships implemented as orders. Mm, Maybe this would be possible with another uh, line on the uh, yeah on the map on the table for cards, Maybe. like the naval line where you can run boats, and yeah. somehow you're able to shoot each other lines between these lines. But this would ch general the concept so i don't know about yeah. that i mean i mean it's definitely not something that's coming anytime soon let's just set the expectation for that now but like mm -hmm. when we when we talk about the future of cards you know we're not we're not thinking about the future in terms of you know six months or a year we're thinking you know 10 years down the line um what's the game gonna look like and and what's what are we gonna have uh, in the game at that point and that could very easily take a bunch of different uh different formats um all right so i'm thinking we should start uh just building a deck real quick and uh, do a couple of matches i saw i saw blue was in chat and seeing him made me just think about the rule britannia card allied with us and running like patriotic seal with it as well oh damn this would be... It's like US ramp. Mm. Like if you get all the ramp cards from US, press the Patriotic Seal, and then you just focus on the Brit British card yeah. deck. Like... This could work. More likely. Yeah, I, I already thought about uh, having US. It's so very well. I need, to, but... I need to run for one second. Um, but you can talk a little bit about what I just said so that everybody's entertained but i need to jump there's a guy outside waiting for me <laughs> real quick okay one minute sorry guys um well patriotic seal will be very slow uh i don't know if the uh these decks with rural britannia are able to run that many uh 7k plus cards sure the combo uh, could be amazing, but you need a lot of time to make that work. Mm. Maybe you're not able to to get this combo with pa a patriotic seal out uh, early enough to not die. Mm. But most likely, this rule of 
Rule Britannia is played with a buff Cup of Tea. A 1k buff, giving all of your units plus 2 HP. Uh, so, um, deck type and archetype. Uh, with Cup of Tea, with uh, infantry guys. 20 give all that's two defense and of course some fifth regard the upcoming 3k regard grenadier guards black watch uh, all of these all of these guards with much hp buffing them even more and then playing Guards giving you naval support and wool Britannia. Okay. This could be very strong. But yeah, may maybe you are able with ins to create and patriotic seal rule Britannia combo. Yeah. Oh, nobody's able to beat unless you're running a hard removal. But but not the Empire of the Sun. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine like playing Empire of the Sun on a buffed uh, 30, 30 uh, attack and HP unit. You're going to kill yourself through fatigue. Yep. I had a, I had that happen to a guy I was playing against the other day. He empired, mm. uh, he empired like a 16-16 guy. And <laughs> he had a full hand. He had like 9 cards. So he overdrew... 15 cards. <laughs> well, <laughs> well uh, the best way to counter this is with some hard. Yeah. US ramp. Uh, the B17, the Avenger, maybe Dust Film Rebuff, or that. Or that card that Blue revealed, which was high. Yeah, you know, the, this card. Yeah, sorry, I was running out and uh, back. And of course, everything like uh, Bounce Back, like Leopold. Rough Lightning, or even Sender Regiment to get rid of these buffs. Yeah. Um, so yeah, sorry I had to jump out. There was a guy that uh, you know hit me with his car, so I needed to handle some stuff. Um, but okay, so we're going to challenge Blue. Uh, Blue, send me your in-game name and stuff on, on Discord so that I can add you. Um, let's challenge him first with the token deck, and you're going to help me play it. And okay. then afterwards, we'll take one of your other decks. I'll make it on this account, and we'll um, we'll use it to uh, to fight blue as well. All right, where is he? There he is. I'm gonna hide this. Oh, what's going on? Should I watch the stream, or are you going to? I'll I'll share. I'll share. Okay, there we go. Cool. All right, so I added you blue. There we go. Have you accepted? There we go. Challenge accepted. You can see my screen, right? Yeah, I can see it. Okay, perfect. All right, guys. Now you've seen me play this deck twice. Um, now watch Darkness make all the different decisions from me, <laughs> showing how badly I, I played it. Good luck to you too, Blue. Um, we were talking just before the stream, and one of the things that you were saying uh, so you're going to get rid of the hammer and the tomahawk. Yeah. And this is really good. That's our turn one, right? Mm. Yeah. This is going to be turn one. Ah, that hurts. 
Yeah, it does. <coughs> but yeah, we were talking. We were talking a little bit earlier. So he's running his aggressive German Soviet deck, mm -hmm. and yeah, this is going to be your turn. Your turn one, playing combat engineers, playing both. 505th rifles, killing the first one, sadly, but getting the front line with the second. These two, the alliance buffs, hurts very much. To have them in our hand? Ah, and he got an answer. Well, mm. you need to skip that turn. We had a good turn one, but not good. Not a good turn two. Uh, but yeah, we were talking just before the stream, um, and you were specifically like referencing Blue Blast there and saying like when he's playing on the ladder, you need to be aware of these aggro type of decks. Um, so I bloody sickle now. Yeah, bloody sickle one of these frontline guys. Hmm. Just have to pass, right? Yeah, just wait. <laughs> oh. You're you're very unlucky in your card war. Wow. Hmm. Writing another turn would be too slow. He's able to deal so much damage. You, it's it's quite a bad move, but the best move you can playing second combat engineers and industrial mites just to draw one card. Yeah. It's very weak, but you're basically out of cards. And. Do I keep this? He's going to trade for this, for sure. Um, you, you, sadly, you need to trade. You, you need to play. You need to play it. Yeah. Mm, because um, it would be better to play with a combo, but. Uh, you can't raid any longer. If he's attacking you two more times, you'll have no way to win anymore. Maybe yeah. there's no way to win in this matchup. Uh, with him starting that good. I mean, I think it's going to be pretty difficult unless we, unless we don't really have any AoE removal. GG? Oh my god. A Blitzkrieg. Yeah. Well, the two 554 rifles were good with combat engineers, but sadly you were only able to get one guy buffed because he blocked the frontline turn one. Yeah. And we are able to get rid of the second one, turn two. This was uh, great for him. And you didn't draw anything useful the turns after like industry mites alliance uh the second combat engineers without infantry guys or holding the front line was completely useless yeah uh that was very unlucky yeah it was it was definitely tough it's definitely tough um we'll do one more with the tokens and then you pick another deck uh send it to me with the import code I'll build it here, we go through it, and then we'll play a couple more matches. Ah, he's playing something different now. Ooh, is he playing US Ramp? He, he's playing US. Um, we don't know if he's playing US Ramp or US Aggro, US Midrange. I, I was already think I was still thinking about keeping this uh, unit, uh, this, this Man of Steel. Okay. Um, Maybe you could have saved that, maybe not. Against aggro, this would be strong, but it's ramp, so this was a uh, better decision. 
<laughs> you should pl play the 321 infantry guy now, moving to the front line, yeah. And then Cossacks next turn, front line? D depends. So he's setting up more ramp. Uh, yes, play the Cossacks. Uh, Spooz will reveal a card tomorrow through a YouTube video. So I'll make sure to check out his channel for that. Hmm, this was... This was lucky for you. I can get so, this... I can get my Cossacks pretty big. Yeah, wait a second. You are going to draw first. So you are using two bloody sickles onto uh, the 2-2 two -two infantry guy. First one, what are, are we going to draw? The hammer, fine. Yes. Uh, no, the second one. Yes. Okay, fine. Uh, play the five, the zero cost rifles. Uh, buff the Corsair and kill the. Moving them to the front line. And now we are going to pray. We will pray he's not having Avenger. He's no adventure. In hand, it's definitely in his deck. What are you thinking? Do I have that? Ooh! A few good men. It's one of the new elites. Long term. <laughs> okay. Mm. Do I hammer long term and just go face? Yes. And You're going to hammer side. long term. Uh, go face, move the 16th rifles to the front line and play one reserve. Even if he's drawing an Avenger now, uh, we are able to kill him. Your camera froze. My camera froze. Oh. Oh. Damn, that does. Be very lucky. Do I just play a bunch of light infantry and then industrial might for the card draw and then attack? Um, yeah. Always attack with the little guy first, only. Indeed. Mm, but... Uh, that's not that bad. Is it worth yeah, for the ju two cards? Just, just draw some cards. It's not that bad. Because now he's not able to kill the 16th with Avenger. Yeah, so true. in, in un, maybe he's running QS, but he didn't reveal his ally nation now. If he's carpet bombing you, that was a mistake. If not, that was actually the right place, the right play. Oh. Gunship mission. Good game. Good game. I wanna buff one guy. There we go. We made it. Alright. We'll call this 1-1. One, one. Okay, pick another deck and uh, send it to me on uh, Discord. Okay. We'll do one more. Hmm. What what do you want to play? Aggressive control ramp. Let's play some. Uh, let's play some ramp. Let's play some ramp. I think ramp Ooh. is something that the general player is really afraid of. I'm really afraid of ramp because I always feel like I'm I'll 
fail in the in the lead up, fail when I'm trying to ramp, and just end up losing without getting my big units out. You drew a carpet bombing off of mobilization. Oh my god. <laughs> so this is an ramp deck I prepared. Okay, craft all these cards. So while I'm crafting, can you talk a little bit about the deck if you want? Um, it's a... It's a very basic <laughs> ramp deck with some US control. Uh, so you are not able to die to aggro very fast because ramp deck in general is weak against aggro. So it contains basic stuff like some Broken Giants, Albacore, Fortification, First Marines to protect you to not die till turn 6 or 7. Mm -hmm. And it's then based on the ramp with Engineer Regiment and War Bonds. So you are able to play the big units and big removal like Strategic Bombing, Cup Bombing, as a Mitchell. Avenger, Grenadier Guards, Flank Fortress, and uh, Seaborn Invasion on Pershing. You want to reach this late game as soon as possible while you're trying to survive against uh, more aggressive decks. You only have one B-17? I only have one B-17 okay. in this deck. Mm, because... You, you can't put every uh, good value, high credit cost card into a deck and thinking you're going to win. Yeah. If, if you throw everything, if you're only running 7k plus cards, you're dead before you're able to play one. Yeah. Against most of the decks. That makes sense. Um, sure, the B17 is very strong. But I do believe the Avenger is a little bit stronger because you're able to target a, uh, to uh, yeah to to target more. You're going to destroy a random enemy unit with five defense or more. So the Avenger is going for big units. Mm -hmm. That is great. The B17 is heavy armor, more sets. That's great. And uh, but the deployment effect is just like Death from Above. Destroying a random enemy unit. Imagine you're running into tokens and the enemy is having one incredible buffed 2020 token unit mm -hmm. uh, with an 8 1 1 units. Yeah. Uh, you're just going to snipe this big guy with the Avenger. Yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. So um, I'm just going to quickly like read through the. Um, read through the, the deck here so people can know. There's two Awoken Giants, one Secret Operatives, two Albacores, one Strafing, um, Air Defense. I feel like Air Defense is a really, really valuable elite and uh, it's one of the ones that I find always useful. Um, three of the 332nd Engineers for the ramp, two of the Hellcats, two Convoys for some card draw, a Fortification, is there a reason why you throw that single fortification in there? Is it just so that you might pull it when you need to survive for that extra turn, or...? Um, it's because the last week where uh, there were a lot of aggro units, uh, a lot of aggro, uh, of aggro decks, and even mid-range value decks are able to deal a lot of damage. So uh, you need some cards, uh, Preventing units dealing damage like pin, like other core, like guards, or like first marines guarding your headquarter. But uh, yeah, I just put these fortification in uh, to gain HP to not die to these decks. Mm -hmm. I firstly started with two fortification, but uh, I was missing some some units, so I put one fortification out. Okay. Then we have a uh, first Marines um, M4A1. This is really good if uh, if you're facing this card. Black Watch, um, slowing down the enemy as well. Uh, P40, 
Uh, again, slowing down the enemy a little bit. War bonds. Um, I'm a little bit curious. Is it is it normal to just run two war bonds in one of these U.S. decks? It's blue. Do you also just run two? And what's the case for not running three? Mm. Well, most of the decks uh, with ramp are running two or three uh, of war bonds. Currently, the meta is very. Uh, there are a lot of aggro decks, and ramp is struggling against aggro. So you need to cut some of these ramp uh, parts to strength this deck to get a proper win rate, mm -hmm. or at least 50%. And yeah, this this was one decision based on the current meta. So if if we would face and control meta with Brits are overpowered. I would definitely put in three war bonds, okay. and maybe war machine too. Okay. Then we have uh, the mobilization for card draw. We can do it. A great buff card overall. Um, the hundred first airborne, a really good uh, unit. B twenty five Mitchell. You see, most of these have some sort of deployment effects that deal damage and allow you to to get the two for one unit trade. Um, the grenadier guards. Uh, strategic bombing, a really key card. Um, the Avenger, a really key card as well to deal with those bigger units. Carpet bombing, seaboard invasion, B-17 flying fortress, and then the Pershing. Um, all right, now that Blue knows exactly what we're bringing, it's time to challenge him. Um, let's just hope he's too distracted with uh, eating his Chinese food. Uh, ben Blonde, uh, this is something that we've definitely, um, you know, we've, we've definitely looked at and might come in the future. Um, new HQs uh, are coming in the campaign mode. Um, for now, they mostly signal that there's going to be a different battlefield that you're going to be playing on. All right, so what are we looking for in the mulligan here? Uh, we are looking for Evoking Giants and uh, all these cards below 4k we do not have a single one so maybe we can keep the m4a1 just because this is a good unit we can play turn four to get some trades off we need to get rid of convoy because you already got five hands drawing uh, cards drawing a, a sixth one mm. you could have uh discarded the M for a one two, but yeah. um, well, that's that's fine. We're able to play something. Looks like he's running tokens, and you just draw two albacores. That's a really esport pro player move. Drawing two albacore MK one against token. That's that's how I that's how I uh, roll. I, I draw the right cards. No, but I, um, I think like an added point with the M4A1 and something that makes me, you know, even more sure that I, I should have discarded it is you want it in your deck so that it can trigger the effect if, if you get discarded, right? Yeah, that's fair point, but he's running Soviet and uh, Soviets are not running discard abilities. He needed com in combination. Yeah, play one core. You need to play combination with German to make some discard. Maybe he's running uh, Takasaki with Japan, but it's just, that's uh, only two possibilities uh, for this combination. And the current Soviet-German version is quite weak, yeah. so I don't expect him playing discard at all. Damn, looks like he nude you played uh you you had these alba cores you need to uh, oh this is do i play the hellcat bad. Mm, yes you're going to play the hellcat you have to yeah uh, if you were on four credits you would have traded into the tomahawk to kill it turn five is uh, your elite 5k infantry unit 101st. Yeah. 
but now you need to get rid of this tomahawk somehow. Ooh, that was that was great. Whew. That was lucky. All right, we you, the you need right? to kill. You need to kill the tomahawk. For sure. Yeah, just trade it. Play the other albacore and pin the katusha. Yes. So that's, that's the, right. It's the only thing that can reach us and can potentially take one out. We are able to trade it out next turn. If we need it. Best top deck would be carpet bombing here. Ooh, he's he's running this late game version. Interesting. <laughs> I feel like. Do I play Black Watch here and then kill the Katusha? Hmm. This would be. Played in between here. Yeah, just played in between there. This is maybe too greedy, but yeah, let's do it and kill the Katusha. This is very greedy because if he's choosing to block the front line and not killing the Albacore, you're not guarding your headquarter, and he's able to attack your headquarter over and over again. Yeah. Uh, so this is maybe going to be a problem, uh, but you're running late game and late removal. I mean, I guess the big thing that he could do is just be to move the train. Yep, there we go. <laughs> well, sure, this was a great play by him and starting to attack, but you need... No, it's very sad we didn't draw the 3k Engineers Battalion. You need to play Warbands now and kill one infantry guy. Yeah, that, that was the right one. Yeah, so for anyone wondering, I killed the one on the right here because that's where they spawn in and he's guarded, whereas this is always going to be open. So I have. So otherwise. you're able to kill the other one, one with your Black Watch. Yeah. And I chose to use the Albacore instead of the Black Watch to save the one HP on the Black Watch. Okay. It's a, it's a maximum of five units in the front line, right? Yes. Oh, please, no you. Oh. Ouch. Ooh, best, best top deck. Yeah, you're going to play the Seaborn Invasion. And it's going to feel real good. So I'm just going to take a moment to savor this. <laughs> nice. And you were lucky enough to to uh, not send the 8-8 eight, eight into the back line. Just, just wait a second. Uh, just move the black watch to the front line between these infantry guys now. Yeah. Yeah, makes The reason why you're not going to trade now is uh, because you want to fill the front line and block the front line. Mm -hmm. He has two units. He's not able to attack the front line, the engineer's battalion and the more train. And the more train is on the wrong side of the headquarter. So you are able to attack him. Unless he's filling the other side uh, with at least two units. Yeah, he would have to play two units to the right of the headquarter to stop it from spawning a unit that removes the guard. Yes. So you're, you're just raiding and sitting in the front line because he got two of his backline spots already blocked. 
Uh, you, you could remove this now, but don't do that. This would be bad. Okay. Uh, you are going to um, set up more ramp. Play the engineer's battalion. Yes. Play. You. Uh, we can do it. And this move looks uh, maybe suspicious to to the viewer. But you're going to send the albacores to the front line. And turn. Ooh. Explain, please. Um, well, his deck is based on uh, buffs like Unity is Strange, like the Alliance, uh, like Combat Engineers. He got another one. And... Uh, even cards like No Surrender needs a free. They need a free support line. Mm -hmm. So his he's very under pressure now. He needs he really needs to get back into the front line. And if you are moving uh, units to the front line over and over again, he's not able to win. Also, I guess. I guess. Um... With the bombers there, he's not able to trade his units out either, because they don't take return damage. Mm. That's so, like, true. If you would be able to, so uh, he would he would have to he would have to spend five credits to. Yeah, but but with the alliance, with two alliance, he's easily able yeah, to trade the bombers. Yeah. That's true. Uh, so now you're you're going to kill these two infantry guys, so he's not able to uh, buff these. Play the two M4 A1 tanks. Yes. And move this to the front line. And then enter. Exactly. Enter. We, you don't attack in here? No, 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 no. Just because this would put it at 1 HP and make it a favorable trait? Yes. Okay. And we do want the more train blocking his uh, support line. Yeah. Well, we do have two Alba cores. So these spawned units are not a threat for us. And we have two rays to remove the Amora train uh, really quickly. Yeah, and we have a way to if... get that Katusha as well. Yeah. Mm. And when you say two ways, you're talking about the Hellcat that deals double Yeah, damage, Hellcat right? and yeah. the TNF Avenger. Yeah. So now you're going to... Uh, trade this um, f uh, this rifle first, this 1-1, uh, one, one, with your 2-5 infantry guy. Yes, killing the Katusha after. With the bombers. Yeah, with the bombers. And you're going to play the Grenadier Guards. And sending one tank to the front line. He's sitting at a lot of HP. Yep. But HP doesn't matter. We need to. We are going to control the battlefield, the front line, as good as possible. So there's no way for him to come back. And within only a few turns, you're able to beat his headquarter down. But I, I like uh, I really love this types of games and cards that go this deep and it's this kind of back and forth. So I guess you know control is probably my favorite playstyle, so to speak. I I really like control too. I think my uh, well my my start was uh, at Britain Control Meta and I played that a lot. So, yeah, I definitely got you. Ah, he's playing his second unity now. Trading. That's that's very fine. Just trade his 3-4 uh, guy with your tank. Mm -hmm. um, and, oof, there are a lot of options now. Yeah, trading... 
trading this with your with your Alba course. 550 force rifles. Move your guard to the front line between the Alba course. Okay. Uh, sacri sacrifice your 3 2 infantry unit. Uh, send your tank to the front line. How many cards do you have? Seven. And you can draw cards with convoy and activate the countermeasure secret operatives. Efficiency. Super efficiency. Finally, we draw strategic bombing here. Yeah, I, I really like strategic bombing. Not only do I think it's one of the coolest cards in the game. I, I was expecting. <laughs> he finally drew his Naval Brigade. Yeah, he set it up. He set it up the turn before. Um, it was pretty obvious. He like yeah. bloody bloody sickled the guard. Mm. Maybe he was still looking for this card. Uh we don't know. Well, what to do now? Strategic bombing, finish off yeah. the naval brigade, and then go face. Well, be best would be. TNF Avenger and Strategic Bombing, but we didn't draw much RAM cards, so uh, just Strategic Bombing is a play here. And then you're going to kill this Ambush Guard, Naval Guard, this Albacor. And mm, you don't even have to trade right now but yeah just finish him with airborne you don't want your more damage onto your m4a ones because uh he's not able to kill these guys with hammer and stuff yeah he's drawing a lot of cards Alright, now we're going to see some of the buffs coming out from him, I would assume. Yeah, the alliance. Yep. Hmm. Just play the B-17. Exactly. Move your infantry guy to the front line. And tra trade one with your full HP tank. Get rid of, get rid of one of these, yes. So has anyone else that's watching like wanted to hit face about 20 times this game, but it's never the right play? <laughs> I've always wanted to just go. Oh, man. But it was the right play to move this yeah. to the front line. I was thinking about secret operatives too, but uh Yeah, I agree. I agree. Hmm. Perfect target for the Aven Avenger. So next turn we're playing Avenger. So that's seven, ten, twelve. He really wants to get rid of these albacores in the front line. Yeah. Just play the Avenger. Mm. And you're going to trade with your B-17 because you're not receiving damage. Does it matter who I kill? Uh, he's probably not running these two order card, so it doesn't matter. But normally if you run against an unknown token deck, you should not kill the Cossacks, but the other one. Okay. Okay, and what to do now? Hmm. To be honest, I don't know. You could trade one infantry guy, but I don't like I'm uh, worth... sacrificing my own unit. Maybe you should just, just uh, play secret operatives and hit with other core one infantry guy, not the headquarter. 
you could have traded into these guys too, but um, this will weaken your front line. Both plays are acceptable. We don't know his answers. And we blocked his bloody sickle. Getting more HP on the Alba Core, that's great. Forcing him to spend a lot of effort trading that. Alright. Okay, okay. We need to start, we need to get back into the front line, right? With more units. Mm. Depends. Well. Well, well, well. Hmm. So I don't think so. Here I'm thinking trade with these two and then play the B25. Yes. Exactly. Wait, play the B25 now. Because this higher the chances of you hitting one of the two guys. Yes, without a destruction effect. And now you're not not the uh, yes, the zero operation cost unit. Yeah. You want to reduce the amount of infantry guys. So letting this guy survive is the best way. Because otherwise there would be two. And this is another potential buff for the alliance. Mm -hmm. He still have one, I do believe. And UNT is strength. He still have one, two. Maybe he's running, we can do it. Yeah. From what I gather, I think he has like two more infantry units in his hand, and then probably some spells. Um, it's pretty clear what you're going to play now. The first marines to the front line, and then trading three infantry guys. Four, six, yeah. Quick mess. Good job. Quick mess. So you're going to make sure your front line is blocked again while trading as much as you're able to do. He He's really afraid of these bombers because uh, bomber decks are crucial to tokens. Yeah. Ooh. And there's a Joseph Stalin you waited for a pretty long time. And you saved your Avenger. Just kill it. And now you're going to deal... You're going to deal damage. Kill this guy. Yes, and maybe you should wait. Stop, stop. Play, play the countermeasure. And attack. Yes. You pl you're playing this very, very safe. This way. But there's no need to rush. Like, he's yeah. having a headquarter, but without an army, uh, he will die to fatigue. Yeah. And yeah, but do, if, you, if you're playing this very safe, he has just no options to win this game. So there's really no need. I feel like uh, Papa, Papa Drogear would, uh, would be proud of me playing this control deck. <laughs> Um, just take your bombers and kill everything he he played. Yeah. And yeah, play the countermeasure. <laughs> mm, he's nearly out of options, so uh, you could already turned around and started taking headquarter. You would have uh, Rin probably too. But, as I mentioned, there's no way to give him a small chance of comeback. Yeah. That <laughs> makes no um. sense. <laughs> Our first Awoken Giant. <laughs> <laughs> a, a little late. Pretty deep. But, we just sa same as... Yeah. You're taking your four, credit, uh, four attack bombers, killing these infantry guys. 
dealing damage. Oh. And he lost his last card. <laughs> Ouch, I'm really sorry about that, Blue. That, that sucked. I'm pretty sure he only has light infantry in his hand right now. Oh, got one unity. Oh. Oh. <laughs> well, this is the time he's really out of options. <laughs> I just had to. I just had to. Yeah. I know. No, no. Yeah. It's a piece and team and... Yeah. Normally, I would not be able to uh, win blue. I think this might be the longest game of cards I've ever played. Uh, control games are going to last very long. Like, yesterday I was streaming for two hours, and I was, I, I played eight games. <laughs> wow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, ju just hit face. He's out of options now. It's pretty safe. We're doing this uh, broadcast rules, no surrendering. Oh. GG. GG. Oh, that was really fun. That's a really fun deck. That's a really fun deck. All right. Well, I have to jump to another uh, engagement now at the six o'clock my time but gg to blue blast uh, thank you so much for darkness before we uh, wrap this up do you want to tell people where they can find you how they can follow your your streams how they can follow your social media and everything else uh yeah i'm streaming cards pretty often uh, every time i'm playing cards at the evening i try to stream this and you're going to find me uh my name on Twitch is Darkness, uh, Darkness Four, and maybe you can, or I can link the the link to my to my site in the chat yeah, as I'll, well. I'll, I'll link it. As I well. I do have Twitter. I didn't use it I, uh, I... for the last weeks, but um. I try to use this more often and you can find me on Twitter that my name there is darkness for the number darkness for gaming nice well if you guys have any interest in finding me um, I'm on Twitter I never use it though but you can talk to me there if you tweet at me I'll see it um, I think it's at I think it's like, I think it's like this. I'll type it in chat. Oh, oh, oh. There we go. This is my Twitter. If you guys wanna, wanna follow me there. But then it's just uh yeah. Um, ooh, uh, darkness. You can you can probably post the decks on Discord. Um, Minotauro. Darkness can probably post the decks on Discord. Um, if you find it there. I need to run, so I won't be able to do it now, but maybe maybe later. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to thank uh, Darkness so much for uh, joining us, uh, giving us some of his time, giving us his insights um, into the game, and, and teaching us and me a lot. I learned a lot. Thank you so much. Um, thank you to Blue for being a good sport, taking the challenges, and um, yeah, not surrendering in that last turn. I really appreciate that. I really... Uh, appreciate the cards community you guys are awesome thank you so much to everybody that tuned in thank you all for playing the game for showing it love for buying the pre-orders um participating in this awesome community so uh let's keep it going uh there's going to be an ama on friday there we're going to reveal a couple more cards and we're going to be answering all your questions there's an ama thread up on reddit where you can post your questions uh directly to the dev team and then on monday 
Um, we're going to be doing a little roundtable discussion where we will go through every new card coming in the expansion and talk about them in detail. Very similar to how we kind of went through the five cards that are coming in the draft earlier in the stream, but with all the cards, all 40 different cards that are coming in the expansion. And I haven't asked, I think, Darkness, but I, it would be great if you could be there with us. Uh, on, on this AMA stream? No, on Monday. I'll, on I'll Monday. I'll send you Discord. We'll talk about it. Okay. All right. Thank you so much, guys. Have a great evening. We'll talk to you later.